about the other. To, de to be different is in nature something of a thing, rather common. In society, we frown and shame, ridiculed in silence. Why can't we see? Being different is natural. I have another poem. So this one is called Invisible Illness. So the vestiges of my life vanish day by day. Pieces of my soul are shipped away by pain and poverty. The world is unfair when you are made of glass. Mm. I have too many poems here. So, this poem is called Disability. I am a person even though I am not treated like one. Slept under the rug left to exist. I don't live a life. Do I really have a life at all? I'm worth it. At least that's what I believe. So this poem is called Poetic. <laughs> Differences are only celebrated if they're convenient. Being understood takes too much effort. This really isn't poetry, just that fact. <laughs> a crow among songbirds. And if you're not familiar with autism, it's a neurodevelopmental disability. I won't go into all the details. So here's how I ended my presentation after going through what, a, what are the hopes of my community, what are the barriers that we experience, and, uh, and then they got to know me and, and my other presenters as, um, as my group. So, so here's the crow among songbirds. All right. So, who is me? Or perhaps, as you come to see, you ask, who am I to you? Am I a person of value? Do you see my drive, complexity, and intensity? Do you know how to support me with dignity? As, I've come, as you come to know me, perhaps you're in or do you see, as many have in my life, that my sensitivity is a flaw, and that for your comfort that my light should be dimmed as a person you find untrimmed? Do you scold me for not always having access to my words, for I am seen by society as a crow among songbirds? I so wish you could appreciate me and my community in all of our diversity and beauty, as full and equal members of society. We can guide you in your allyship to right the ship so that the barriers we face can be remedied in this place. Thank you. How does one advocate? Is it being passionate about something? Is that what it takes? But passion was there, but where to go? until a group of kindred spirits, friends appeared, helping me find my voice in joining together. A tune from my past flows through my mind. United we stand, divided we fall. Sweat pours down my back as the breeze cools. The sun beats down, thump, thump, it goes. Sound fresh. Hellings Beats. You crazy for this one, man. Shout to all my blind people, visually impaired motherfuckers out there. Yeah. I'm FDB. And I'm half blind. But I'm here to change your preconceived notions of my shit. What up? Visually impaired since the age of two. What else should I be? Well, just be you. Now it's true. I can see a little bit, but when people call me blind now, really I don't give a shit. It's just their ignorance. Why they wanna put me in a box with hip hop? Got the keys to their locks. Seeing must rock, but I'm not second guessing. But someday I'll turn this curse into a blessing. So I'm not stressing, I'm learning life's lessons. Still I'm progressing, not playing no more messing. Why you wanna diss me for my disability? You got full vision and you ain't having ill as me. I can kill a beat, that's why I'm not still in the street. I'm just trying to kill the industry. Spending my life all day on the grind, man. Till then, to you, I'll just be a blind man. I can't see the drive I can see MTV's fans multiply Cause 
I am the truth, man, I wouldn't want to be a lie I want y'all to realize I'm a normal guy Though I don't recognize you when you're waving high I'm not saving lives, just want y'all to relate To create understanding and stop all the hate Just appreciate what you're giving I do that I'm out here trying to make a living Locked in a mental prison Thought they threw away the key But I'm rapping now Cause hip hop set me free He still tests me like Roblox and my ambition But I'm still loving my position Lately, I'm not praying to see I'm just praying that people see MDB Alone in my apartment, life in isolation because of disability. Narrated and created by Shelley Petit. Stuck alone in my house, why you may ask? The answer is sadly simple, yet shouldn't be allowed. I'm one of the thousands with a disability you see. Or maybe you don't because of the barriers society creates that further isolates all like me. Do not be mad at the comments above. Until 48, I too was mostly one. Society has done such a great job of claiming to be open and accessible and acting like they care. <clears throat> but in reality, little is done and some really do care don't get me wrong but until all are educated about the barrier society creates i and so many others will continue to be stuck and full of gloom if it was just me maybe it wouldn't be so bad but it's babies and teens young adults and new parents your friends, your family, and more. You see, disability comes in all sorts and has no preference as to who it will take into its fold. When I ask you, what is a disability? What comes to mind? I'm willing to bet you think of the deaf, those in wheelchairs, and the blind. Yes, that's definitely a part, an important part of our community. But 70% of those with a disability are just like me, living in invisibility. In the other corner, there's a poster or a picture of myself in the middle. And above it, it says, I may be muffled by my mask, but I won't be muzzled. Life with MCS tilt. That is the current mask I have to wear outdoors uh, to le be able to leave my house with any notion of safety. Just because you do not see it does not take away from my pain. My inability to leave my house due to the PFAS and PFOS chemicals and scents at every turn that are assaulting my body and brain. And above the cameo, there's a picture of myself sitting on the couch uh, with my eyes, um, as you can see, very in a weird position. And the poster says, my brain on chemicals. This would be shortly after being exposed to something very minor. Um, and I would have been like this for hours and unable to get up and walk or talk. Next, we're gonna start with this poem. It says, imagine if you could not access the place of worship work, school, safe housing, shopping, doctor, dentist, hospital, family or friends, movie theaters, oh, what I wouldn't do to get, get to go to a movie, restaurants, vacations, 
airplane. Mm -mm. Trains, subways, buses, parks, or your own yard. All, all because of other people's choices. Well, sadly, we don't have to imagine this. We live it every single day. This is MCS. When exposed to fragrance, be it in perfume, cologne, laundry detergent, dryer sheets, cosmetic, hair products, air fresheners, hand and body lotions, or be it PFAS and PFAS, what we call forever chemicals found in our furniture, in synthetic clothing, footwear, bags, treated leather, paints, house building products, gas and diesel vehicles, two and four stroke engines, and so much more. A canary's light, light is dimmed and dimmed and dimmed some more. Some like my, me are extremely fortunate and have found a safe home. Inside we use only water and vinegar and baking soda. No chemicals at all. It also means though no new furniture or appliance come inside until they've off gassed at least six months or more. Not easy in a snowy climate. And friends and family must never come past the front door. Canary cry. Sh shared with permission of the author Laura McFadden, a member of the Fragrance Free Respect Coalition. My eyes are swollen. My lips are numb. I have heart palpitations, but not in love. Brain fog is the state of mind. Will anyone ever understand our kind? The nausea is real and so much to take. Can I please just get a break? I'm a survivor, a champion, a pioneer, and always a friend. I wish I had more who understood daily struggles and love to give. I will keep fighting for canaries and all, for we are the ones who are taking the fall. The canary life is isolated and sad simply because there are just so many chemicals out there that make our bodies so mad. Going out into the world brings forth worry of anaphylaxis and death. So inside we stay crying and asking why, why me? Under our breath. Why under our breath? I do not know. Because only the cats and walls will hear us because we are all alone. This is but one type of isolating disability. There are thousands of types out there. Trust me. And these are my two cats. This is Elvis, the black and white tuxedo. And this is Lady Gaga. She's long haired, gray with some white nerve. And she's on the nasty side, that one. So why should this matter to all out there? It's really quite simple, you see. Besides just plain humanity, tomorrow you could be joining me. As I've mentioned before, disability does not discriminate. It will have no problems making you its mate, keeping you isolated, sad and alone, be it the environment, the weather, or attitudes that keep you stuck in your home. And down below is a art, picture of an article from a newspaper and I'm stuck at the door because I can't go beyond. Today is the day for all to change their ways. Help ensure all kids can get out to play. Kids of all ages from cradle to grave so that no one feels all alone for the rest of their days. Thank you. Love you.
was for all of you Toastmasters, to all the Toastmasters all around the world, Toastmasters clubs. Ça c'était peut-être les, les clubs de Toastmasters à travers le monde. Alors euh, sur ce, merci. Bye guys, on that note, thank you. Thank you.
votre monde est étranger au mien. Vous m'avez baïonné, vous m'avez enchaîné. J'ai été le maillon déconnecté d'une chaîne oppressée. Je me suis conditionné à un discours intériorisé. Je me suis conditionné au passé. Je ne veux plus continuer d'avancer pour m'intégrer. Je veux avancer pour me laisser porter par mon être. Je veux me relever et continuer de marcher. Je veux m'émanciper. not speaking of tramp stamps or back hair is a man who knows more about rocks than anyone that I've ever met. And his name is Alex Annie. Six, but you know. <laughs> you put me in a nice suit, I think we're pushing a seven, it's the compression. Like, that compression gets me, you know? It's me rock hard. Yeah, sorry. This is the downside about rocks, it's all puns. Like, when, like, when were rock puns the funniest? In the Stone Age. <laughs> They're terrible. They're terrible. They're absolutely terrible. But, the worst part is people coming up to you with like random rocks and being like, hey, what's this rock? I'm like, I don't know. It's probably either from your backyard or like your beach vacation. And then they want it to be worth something. It's like, oh, it's like they take a stamp, you take it to a guy who collects stamps, now it's worth something. I'm like, no, people who like rocks like the dumbest rocks. They're not worth anything. I'm like, also, you live in Miramichi. There's no blood diamonds in your backyard. Like, if there were emeralds in Edmondson, the Kia dealership wouldn't be a landmark. <laughs> like, emerald mine, not like, oh, go up to the Kia. You know, when you get to the Kia, bud, just turn over there. <laughs> You're on the wrong page. It's like, it's the same rules for music, right? Nobody was calling Michael Jackson the king of rock until he had that stupid shiny jacket. Okay? There's, there's a reason why Prince came in second. It's like, you're not shiny enough, buddy. You need more sequins. Just sitting up there in Minnesota in the dark. It's like, okay. Michael be glowing on stage. <laughs> but like, it's kind of like being a prospector, right? It's like the same room. If you can't get the shiniest rock, okay, you're like, okay. Shiny ones are all gone. We gotta make do with like everything that's left. You want to find the ones that got a little bit of rust on them, because that means, okay, there's some metal in here. Take this at a scrap yard and negotiate with someone. <laughs> Probably some. Hey, that, that, honestly, that's, that's where I got my name from. My mom was like, okay, this is what's left, we'll take it. <laughs> like, so, but the problem with that is like, now I have like a problematic type because I've been trained to look for shiny rocks, but I'm also looking for rusty things. Now I see like a ginger guy with a big beard walk by, I'm like, oh, wait, oh, I'm conflicted. <laughs> You're in Fredericton, it's a great problem to have. <laughs> so, like, I moved here, right? And uh, I go looking for a barber shop because, like, I didn't have, like, I, this mess wasn't what it is right now. I can, like, put it in a bun and pretend it's not there, right? That's the first time I've ever had a straight razor shave because I'm walking down the street and I'm like, okay, like, where's all the brothers? I go to the barber shop, guys. So they send me to the barbershop, it's down at the bottom of the region, it's got the pole up, and I'm like, okay, this is the first time, you know? I get to like have a traditional straight razor shape. I came out with a different person. I realized you can't argue with a guy who's got a razor in your neck. He's like, I, yeah, totally. I, yeah, I agree with you, bud. Yeah. Like, 
straight down in there, I think we run through here. First time I was, I was like, yeah, they just all the Canadians are straight in my system. But there's benefits to like looking kinda exotic around here. There's like was that two or three weeks ago? Like you can pretend that you don't know how to speak English, even though they think in English is not important coming here. You can just walk, walk confidently into the drive-thru, stand there looking at the sign that says only cars. You're like, hello! <laughs> Classic YMCA Gucci Daddy shorts, like tight all the way up. Every mosquito on Fredericton is all over those legs. It's just like, oh, it's like, no. And two armed guards on their brakes standing behind us. The guys in the window is like, what do I do here? Is this that Jerry Prince from my emails? Did you show up? Yes, yes. Come on, so I can use my coupons. Sit out here. Thank you very much.